spot, nah, I'm Jay. C-Dub on the beat. Back against the wall, CL20's knocking ready. IGI's tripping, validated, shoot ready. Brown incarceration, got my people living daily game. Hey yo, what's good with everybody, man? I hope everybody's having a productive day, feeling blessed, and like I always say, it's one life, one chance. When they got one chance to do this right, let's get it done. So with that being said, man, I went on Cinemills TV, man, drove down to Burbank, California, did an interview for you guys, man, and did it for myself too. But remember, like I said, we're a team right here. I consider us all a team. They trying to take us down, bro, so let's keep going positive, bro. And just one more thing, right? I want to show you guys something. So it's done, bro. That's all of it. Pictures and everything. Pictures and everything. All my all my pictures from my paperwork. Uh, now I just gotta find a publishing company. And I, what I mean by pictures of my paperwork, I mean like pictures of all my paperwork, riots, everybody, else, everything. You name it, it's in there. Broke it all down for you guys. So with that being said, hit that subscribe button, hit that like. Always leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Check the links in the description for my Apple and Spotify music. Go ahead and run my streams up. And you can check out my playlist section on my YouTube channel and check out my music right there. Thank you guys for you guys' time. Most importantly, thank you guys for you guys' support. They had a lot, I've been seeing this a lot, right? And I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I think I talked about it before, but I'm gonna address it again and again and again. But somebody keeps asking me, you know, am I scared about talking about these big prison organizations and you know, what about the green light on me? What is, does, does, do I feel threatened? Do I feel safe? You know, things of that nature. Right, for one, we gotta remember, if I was to continue to remain like a lot of individuals, especially actives, who see the truth, who know what's taking place, who knows what they're undergoing, who knows the scandalous politics that these big homies are doing, but can't speak up about it. If I was to conduct myself in that same fashion, in that same essence of fear, and intimidation then I'm just allowing and others are allowing these individuals to remain in power and remain in control see that's what they want they want us to be in fear and they don't want to be talked about as if they want to remain mysterious to the world but yet the vast majority that have been hurt by these individuals are still work under these individuals under their tyranny under their scandalous ways you know they know the truth but they can't say nothing because of fear of death or fear of getting hurt or fear of their families getting targeted since the Mexican Mafia and Evan just recently have been targeting family members now, not just individuals part of the organizations or working for the organizations. So it's gonna take individuals like me that are willing to speak up and step up to the plate and speak on behalf of everybody else. And I noticed that with my channel, I've given these individuals a platform themselves where they can give me information, I put it out there, maybe it rattles the cages, maybe it shakes things up, or maybe I'm not making a difference, who knows? But I refuse to sit back after everything that I've seen and everything that I went through and everything that I put other people through and just sit here and watch other Norteños and other Sureños go through what I went through. And all I can say is, that's pretty messed up, bro. It is what it is, man. You know, he needs to take his lickings. No, why not exercise my voice to try to create either preventative measures or a rebellion or a resistance. So the individual, I'm not saying individuals go go to war with these individuals like I once did. But for individuals to finally pull away and say, you know what? I'd rather be at home with my family and my kids than to be on the streets working for these fools in the prison system just because they have cell phones now. See, the thing about it is where I think the NF and the Mexican Mafia and all these big organizations messed up at is with this end of hostilities treaty is that they wanted the opportunity to finally get released from Corker and Shoe. They only did that for a selfish reason. And that selfish reason was displayed when they took over the yards, suspended everybody from their, their status, like end souls no more. That, they got rid of that so you could just be made straight to a carna. That was an act of desperation. We don't want end souls on the yard no more, so you're going to come straight. If, you, if you're really committed to this movement, you're going to come work for us. You're going to be part of our organization, lifetime commitment. Now you're going to have to do a lifetime commitment. And now you're going to have to do life with that commitment as well. For the Sureños, it's a little bit different. They still got the mesas out there, but a lot of these Sureños just been brought up in that life, bro. They don't know how to get, they don't know how to erase that life in their head. That hey, bro, I gotta work for this big homie. That's their aspirations, bro. That's gonna, that's a hard one to really get rid of, and I understand it. But I'm trying. I'm trying by telling these Mexican mafia stories and discrediting these individuals and showing who they really are, their real colors, what the basis of the organization really is. There is no positivity out of it. So what do I look like sitting right here saying, you know what, bro, I don't want to talk about the bro, I don't even want to say their names, bro. 
What do I need to be scared of? Because I was already dean before I came out of prison. And I was already going at it with Norteños on the streets before I even became a YouTube face or became YouTube famous. It didn't even matter. I was already dealing with repercussions for the tattoos that I had, the organization I was representing prior. So this do, doing what I'm doing now makes no difference. See that green light, like I said, there's a lot of things that I haven't talked about. There's a lot of people that I haven't talked about on the basis that I'm not gonna put everybody's business out there, but I've got into it with a lot of people. And I know a lot more stuff than you guys know that I know how serious it is. I know how serious this green light is. And it's funny that, you know, I'm just a YouTuber, bro. I was at, I was Norteño Solalo, turn rider, now I'm nothing. But it's funny that these, uh, these, these NF members like put me as a high priority to take me out. Over people that have testified against them, that wore wires on them, and I don't even blame those individuals no more. After seeing all this scandalous stuff and all these new videos that are coming out of their scandalous ways and their dirty little secrets, I can't even judge a man for actually trying to take them down. That's their story, but hey, I'm the priority now because I'm the young-minded individual who's very articulate, who's been through it all, who knows the dirty secrets and their scandalous ways and decided to say, you know what? Denounce all gangs, including them, I'm sorry that they perceive it and other pe people perceive it as I'm embarrassing them, but I'm really not. They're embarrassing themselves. And a lot of these dudes, a lot of these active dudes that are providing this information just goes to show you that they, they're, they're discouraged. The reputation of these organizations is very distorted now and it's polluted. And they only did that to themselves. And they even did They even made it even worse for the situation by coming out, taking everybody's phones, whacking people over drug deaths, whacking people over dope, forcing people to bring dope in. Now, now you get to see it firsthand. So it's really not my problem. And they, they shouldn't even have a problem with me. They should have a problem with their manpower who's giving me this kind of information because they're discouraging their own manpower. It's their manpower they got to worry about, not me, but yet I'm the high priority. But at the end of the day, even if that green light was really effective. Remember, I lived in Visalia for three years. Three years. Got caught slipping a few times and people knew about it. I even talked to people that had seen it, done it, were around it, heard about it. I talked to a lot of people. And I haven't even talked about the Marriott Hotel situation when I actually dumped. When I dumped back because I was getting jumped. And they showed them that, like, bro, I'm not a coward, bro. I just don't want to bang with you. I just don't want to get it, get, go at it with you. I'm out here just doing me, bro. I'm staying out your guys' way. You can have these damn streets, bro, for these big homies that only making a couple thousand dollars. That's all your life's really worth. And getting indicted for a couple thousand dollars and knocking some food down because some dude in the in the in the in the penal system wants to flex his flex his muscle. That's on you. I've set bigger and better goals for myself, man. And being in the streets ain't gonna help me get there. But command you if you want to stay there and live your life. I mean, you can learn the hard way like I did. But to sit here and say, you know what, I can't talk about these guys and oh my God, the things could happen. And I, everybody's always saying, bro, the black hand has a far reach. Bro, I was in California for the last past three years, bro. I just moved out of state. And I moved out of state for a particular situation that I can't talk about because it's an open case. So I won't talk about it until it's done. And then you guys are gonna see the re my realities on the streets, what I go through. And I know that green light was serious, but I also took it serious too. And I take it serious now because of my family. But what do I look like for my son to grow up and he look at me and he's like, bro, you were a coward this whole time? Nah. If anything does happen to me, he could look back on these videos and like, you know what? My dad stood up for something. My dad didn't want me to get around these kind of gangs or be around these gangs or join these kind of gangs. He stood against them. So the more and more I talk about him and the more my fan base gets big and the more my voice gets heard, even if that green light just does get, me, get to me one day, I'm not gonna be bothered by it. Yeah, I won't be here to see my kid, but I left something behind for my kid to look at and be proud of. That I stood on something positive for once and I was trying to make a difference and I was speaking out against things that I didn't want my son to go through. So no, I'm not scared to talk about anybody. I'm not gonna be blatantly disrespectful and say F this and F them and then no, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna share these stories and point out their scandalous characteristics. It's up to the manpower if they choose to still work for them or not. It's, that's not my call no more. But I tell you this, I've had a lot of individuals approach me said they walked away, that they went back to doing their family thing, they're focused on their family, they ain't even trying to get caught up in all the political nonsense. A lot of people on YouTube may not see that difference, but I do. 
So that's all that matters to me. I don't have to prove nothing to nobody anymore. My audience did it for me. The support and the comments in the comment section did it for me. And I think that's what's pissing off these organizations even more is because they see that I'm loved and appreciated for my message and what I'm doing. So to me, that love and appreciation that I get from my audience and from my channel and my views, that's gonna trump me being worried or me living in fear of talking about these other organizations and this stupid little green light that everybody talks about. Oh, you're high priority. They're gonna catch you slipping one day. So be it. I'm gonna go out with the bang. But the bigger bang is what I leave behind for my son to see. And you know what? I hope he follows in my footsteps by the examples that I set now, not the examples that I set in the past. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I hope I answered your question to the best of my ability. Got more content coming soon. I'm going to work hard. I'm trying to get this publishing deal for this book for you guys. So with that being said, like I always say, it's one live, one chance. We only got one chance to do this right. Let's get it done. Peace.